Okay, so let's see. So we've got a linear transformation. Yeah. And, okay, right, so, oh, sorry, I forgot to switch to the stroke delete. Okay. Um, so we want to compare the area of the image, right, of some domain. Um, uh, to the area of the domain D itself. All right. Okay. So let me just draw a quick picture of what we're talking about. Um, we've got some linear transformation L, and there's some domain over here. Right. And then by the linear transformation, it gets uh, stretched out into some something like that maybe. Right. And this is D, and this is L of D. Okay. All right. Well, let's see here. So um, we want to compute, among other things, uh, the area uh, of this L of D. Right. So let's comp let's just write down a formula. How would we compute the area of L of D? And the thing is, I don't know anything about what this shape looks like. I mean, it, it could be all kinds of weird. All I really know about it is that it's a region, and so therefore its area uh, is a double integral of 1 over, over it. All right, so there's one thing that you can observe. Is that fair enough so far? Okay. All right. Now, um, big hint. This is in the section on change of variables, so we're probably going to do a change of variables, right? And there's only one function in play so far, that is our given linear transformation. That kind of suggests maybe we should um, uh, do a pullback through that as, as change of variables function. Okay. Is that, is that cool? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So let's, um, along those lines, then I'll rewrite this as um, equals, um, well, it's a double integral over the domain D. Um, double it. Now our integrand was one. The integrand is one, and dA. This dA here. Well, dA is uh, absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian of L uh, times. Um, I'm going to say du dV over here, and I guess I'll call this the uv plane. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. So we have uh, th this now. Okay. What do I really do with this though? And what what can I? Uh, what's the takeaway here? Well, nice fact is now. Keep in mind we represent linear transformations with matrices, right? And matrices, the entry. Well, in particular, linear transformations are made up of matrices whose entries are constants. And so this is a constant, and I can factor it right outside. Is that cool? Okay. So that then is absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian uh, times double integral over d of 1 d u d v. Okay, everybody's happy so far. Okay, now let's look back and see. Okay, this is just you know I was I was uh, this is how I know how to write down area. It seems change of variables is a likely tool, so let's write that down. And see what we can do. I I don't really know where this has gone yet. Okay. Okay, so we remind myself remind ourselves of what the question asks. Uh, I want to relate the uh, area of the image. That's this thing that we just wrote a formula for. Okay, and it says we want to relate this to, uh, among other things, the uh, area of D. Okay, where is the area of D? And oh yeah, look at that area of D. Sweet. Okay, um, and then it says times. The area of the image of the unit square. So what we need to do is to figure out how is it that uh, how is it that this might be the area of the image 
of the unit square. I'm going to put a question mark there because we don't know why that's true yet. I'm the, we're supposed to come to that conclusion, but at the moment we're, it's not clear why. Okay. okay, well, let's let's write down how would I compute the area of the image of the unit square, right? And just see what happens. And by the way, notice we, we kind of just did a similar calculation. We started off by looking at the area of the image of the domain D. And we went through this whole change of variables process. So I'm going to do that same process to, to talk about the area of the image of the unit square. So, uh, all right, well, let's, uh, here's the unit square, and I can look at its image by L, it's going to be some parallelogram, so this is S, this is L of S, yeah. all right, and the area of this thing, Well, again, it's a double integral over that thing of 1. And as before, oops, I ran out of space. Did I? Where am I? Okay, good. Uh, as before, um, I can uh, think of this, uh, you know, do a pullback through my change of variables function. And I can rewrite this as, well, it's a double integral over the unit square itself. Uh, same integrand, uh, but don't forget we have to worry about stretching factors, and so you know, that is um, absolute value of this term, the Jacobian L uh, times du dv. Again, this is the uv over here, and again that scalar factors out. Um, so. That factors out, and so again, I end up with something very similar to what I had before, actually. Absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian of L times double integral of the unit square of 1. So it looks awfully familiar. I mean, absolute value of the Jacobian determinant times a double integral of 1. Absolute value of the Jacobian determinant times a double integral. What's different? And what's different is that here our domain uh, is uh, the unit square. And this is an integral that we can compute just brute force, just directly. I mean, doing the, the unit square is a rectangle. We know the bounds. The uh, integrand is 1. This is 1. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, okay, so now why were we doing this second calculation? Um, uh, reminder, the reason we were interested in this second calculation is that we wanted to understand uh, the area of the image of the unit square and ask ourselves, why is this equal to the absolute value? Why is this equal to this? This was our big question. Why is that area equal to that Jacobian determinant? And we have shown, in fact, that that area is equal to that Jacobian determinant. Yeah, thank you. yeah, cool. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So it's a sort of a big picture idea of you know sort of what I really want students to take away from this is um, the f really where this comes from is this fact here that the stretching factor, being as it is a constant, factors out. And what that means is, is that everything's getting stretched exactly the same amount. And so if you want to understand how much is stuff getting stretched, well, if you were to take something that has area 1 and see how it gets stretched, right? Well, the resulting area is going to be 1 times whatever that stretching factor is. So the resulting area is going to be the stretching factor. So the, the idea we're supposed to get here is that the image of the unit square is the stretching factor. The area of the image of the unit square is the stretching factor. And you see here, the area of the image of the unit square is playing the role of the stretching factor. It's the thing that you multiply by input area to get output area. So that's the idea. OK, is everybody happy? OK, let me stop the recording here.